God wants to display the body of Christ. He wants to display you. You are a treasure. And He wants us to live in the light and the reflection of His glory. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So the blood of Jesus gives us access to that glory, to the riches of his glory. And that phrase is used, I think, five times, the riches of his glory. And so uh, in his glorious presence and in Christ himself and Christ in us, the hope of glory. So when you study the word glory, it just really means his manifested presence and it means all of his goodness. That's what happened to Moses when he said, God, show me your glory because that glory is what we were originally crowned with in Psalm chapter 8. It says God crowned us with glory and honor. In Psalm chapter 8, that's mm -hmm. what he created man to carry yeah. his glory mm -hmm. and to, to reflect his glory. And so then you see in uh, Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, one translation says, all have sinned and lost the divine glory they were meant to have. So I think it's a, a, a delight to the devil to try to steal and rob that glory from people, mm -hmm. uh, from mankind. Mm -hmm. And so he says, all have sinned and lost the divine glory they were meant to have. But what Jesus came to do is to restore that glory, as Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 says, to bring many sons into glory. And so what happens through the blood of Jesus yeah. is God's plan is to restore the glory that man once lost. And that glory has so many uh, descriptions and definitions yes. because it's the goodness of God, the yeah. blessing of God, uh, wow, everything that comes from God. We were created in his image and that image in Genesis is also in Colossians that we're to have that same image and, to, and God's likeness to carry that same glory. And that was restored through the cross through the blood of Jesus, the glory, uh, which, which he said in 1 Corinthians, he said, happened for our glory, to restore the glory. Everything was for our glory. Yeah, to restore the glory. Wow. And so uh, we give the glory to God, mm -hmm. we give praise to God, but really God wants us to carry his glory. Because we reflect him yeah. when we carry that glory. Wow, we need to... <laughs> The more we grow in the knowledge of Him, the more we display that glory. Yeah. You know, 2 Corinthians 3, it talks about uh, how Moses, when he went up on the mountain, he saw the glory of God and his whole countenance was, yeah. I mean, they had to put a uh, cover over his mm -hmm. face because he was radiating yeah. the glory of God. And then, um, but he compares that, Paul compares that. When we repent mm -hmm. from our old way and we turn our eyes to Jesus, how that veil, like Moses had, it's mm. ripped away. Yeah. And then uh, the glory of God is revealed in you, yeah. in me, in somebody who believes. And it says, now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Yeah. There's freedom. And then, verse 18, all of us with unveiled face, mm. let it be seen, shine. Yeah. <laughs> Continue to behold in the Word as in a mirror, yeah. the glory of the Lord. So the w glory of God comes out of the Word yeah. and comes out of the face of Jesus. Are constantly being transfigured into His very own image in ever-increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So that's the will of God yeah. to be changed and to shine. And Go from glory to glory. Him. Yeah. A greater manifestation greater. of the glory and the blessing and the goodness of God. And so uh, that glory is um, uh, really just his manifested presence. 
And so you can talk about God's presence being everywhere, but when you say glory, that means you are actually experiencing it right now, right here, in many different ways. We need to learn more of that. Yeah, by the power <laughs> of the Holy Spirit, we experience the realm of glory. Right. And we access the realm of glory. And uh, when we leave this earth, absent from the body, present with the Lord, the psalmist David said, you will receive me into glory. Mm -hmm. That's why Dad Hagen said, never feel sorry for Christians when they die. He said, because when they step into the realm of glory into heaven, which is where the glory of God prevails, he said, everything from this life, all the grief, all the sorrow, uh, everything from the past is gone. It's gone. And so you, they're living in the realm of glory. So you, you have parents and grandparents and friends and family members that are, have gone on to be with the Lord. He said, you might feel sorry for yourself, but don't feel sorry for them. <laughs> he said, no one ever goes to heaven and wishes they could come back. No, no. He said, they're in the realm of glory. With the Lord. Yeah, the, the glory of God. God. And they're fully, they're like him, like uh, 1 Corinthians 13, we shall be like, uh, is that where it says that? We shall be like him, for we shall see him as yeah. he is. Well, interesting, though, I like to tell people when you die and go to heaven, shouldn't be the first time that you've been there. <laughs> you say, well, what That's does that good. mean? Well, that simply means in Hebrews 10, 19, yeah. it says we have boldness through the blood of Jesus to enter into the holiest, into the very presence of God. Because of the blood, we don't have to crawl in, back in. We have boldness to walk right in and cry, Abba, Father, into the holiest presence of God where the glory of God and his presence is awesome and you and I can walk right in because of the blood of Jesus. So something happened on the cross in the death and resurrection of Christ that if you and I live in the light of that, then we can access and live in the very presence of God and actually carry mm -hmm. that glory. <laughs> to mm -hmm. carry the glory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, Dad Hagen said to a bunch of us preachers one time, one of the meetings, he said, I'm going to lay hands on you. <laughs> and uh, he did on Friday he did. night. He yeah. said, I'm going to lay hands on you for you to carry the glory. So you and I certainly are carrying the message of the cross, uh, the message of the gospel, which is a glorious gospel. But we are also carrying the manifested presence of God. It's like Paul said, I want to see you so that I can impart a gift to you. So there's different giftings yeah. that are granted by the uh, laying on of hands or association yeah. like that night when Brother Hagin laid hands on us. Mm -hmm. There was an impartation yeah. of the glory of God. Yeah. And that's a, a dimension of the Holy Spirit yeah. because the glory and the Holy Spirit go together. Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of God, yeah. by the glory of the Father. And that's what it says in Romans 6, 4. Mm. But Romans eight eleven says, the Spirit raised him from the dead. Yeah. So you see, once you get an impartation of another blessing from the mm. Holy Spirit, that's another dimension of the glory of God. Yeah. And it uh, supersedes the natural. So when, it, when he says mm -hmm. that in Corinthians where he says, uh, but we all behold as in a mirror. Yeah. So that means every believer is granted this access. Mm -hmm. That we be, all behold as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We are changed. Mm -hmm. Changed. So the word changed there is the word transformed, mm -hmm. uh, transfigured. He said we all behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and we are transfigured. Uh, I understand that word change there, or transfigured, is in the New Testament three times. Here once in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18. And it's also in Romans 12 where it says we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. It's also in Matthew when Jesus went on to the Mount of Transfiguration and the glory of God that was from the inside right. him burst to the outside him. So it's three times. Uh, and so Peter, James, and John were there, and they actually talked about it later. We beheld the glory yeah. <laughs> of the Son of God. And so uh, they, they knew Jesus one way, but after they saw the glory, they knew him a different way. <laughs> and so we are changed by beholding his glory, beholding his glory, and we are transformed 
from glory to glory. So actually that glory is in us, in Christ, and then that glory is manifested in us as we behold his glory. And as we look into uh, the mirror, which is the perfect law of liberty, which is the gospel of Christ. And so he says we're changed, transformed, transfigured. And so that is a radical change, a radical change, not a minor change. So you cannot spend time in the presence of God without being changed. You cannot spend time in his glory without being changed change. So if you just want to be changed a little bit, just spend a little bit of time there. But if you step over to the realm of glory, accessed by the blood, spend some time in there. Things that you could never change are changed by the glory of Jesus Christ and by the glory of God in his presence. You're transfigured. And people that used to know you say, you don't, don't even really look like the same person. You don't act like the same person. What changed you? Well, Jesus changes everything. He does. And so in his glory, that's where changes happen. So those radical changes happen from the word, renewing of your mind, but it also happens by experiences in the glory of God. There's nothing like it. Nothing like Just it. Just nothing like We've it. We've been in meetings, even the Old Testament, you can see the meetings where the glory of God filled mm -hmm. the house. We've been in meetings in the New Testament. We don't have less glory. No. New Testament, we have greater glory. You should have greater. So we've been in meetings where the glory of God just filled the house, tangible, where you felt like you could almost like uh, get a chunk of it. It's a substance <laughs> uh, from heaven and su substance from God. And so when Moses saw the glory, for him to have that access, God said, I'm going to uh, there's a place by me. I'm going to put you in the rock. And I'm going to cover you with my hand. I'm going to hide you there. Then I will pass by. Will pass and by. all of my goodness. Will be so he used the word goodness Yeah. at the same place, glory. Yeah. He said, show me your glory. And then God said, I'm going to show you my goodness. So but, glory and goodness yeah. go hand in hand. Yeah, all of his same goodness. Same thing. But, but for Moses to see the glory, God said, there is a place by me in the rock, and I'm going to put you in that rock, cover you with my hand, and then when I walk by, I'll remove my hand, and you'll just get a glimpse of the back parts of God. It's just a glimpse of the Where's that place? So the place would be, if you look at uh, maybe even Psalm 91, a secret place, mm -hmm. or in Psalms, uh, what is it, 32, the hiding place. Mm -hmm. So there is a place uh, I like what I heard Smith Wigglesworth say uh, yeah. in one of his books. Yeah. Of course, I'm reading it, but but he says um, he said there's a place, place in God, God where the devil dare not come. <laughs> and Moses found it. <laughs> <laughs> so you could almost David. say the devil may harass you and follow you around for a day or two or three, but the moment you access that place yes. in God, yes. the devil won't follow you in there. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. You got in there by the blood. You can't get in there. <laughs> in the secret place of the Most High. Yeah, so that's where secrets are revealed is They're in revealed. that place. Yes. So that's a hiding place. Mm -hmm. And that is really Paul's revelation of being in Christ, in the rock, in the cleft of the rock. The moment you get to be in Christ and, and you have been given access. It's interesting how Paul experienced the glory of God in the New Testament after meeting Christ, and then how David, he hungered for the glory, and he experienced the glory mm -hmm. in, a, in a new in a dimension in the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, wow, and he was so changed. Yeah. And he saw the glory of God in his life. Yeah. Manifested wow, such power. When we ask God, show me your glory. Yeah. Psalm 63, show me your glory. Mm. Psalm 63, Psalm 27, mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 91, mm -hmm. and then in Paul's letters, that's the Ephesians 3 prayer primarily, yes. but it's mentioned in Ephesians 1 prayer and the glorious revelation of what God has done for us in Christ through the blood. And so really um, now your, your vision of Christianity is no longer just I'm forgiven of my sins, mm -mm. And one day I'm going to go to heaven. Sometimes that's not enough to inspire or capture people's uh, 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 attention, Dedication. imagination. <laughs> and so um, what really can capture 
your, your vision, your imagination is to really see what God has done in Christ is not just to one day take you to heaven, yeah. but it is to give you the same life, same power, same righteousness that he gave to Christ, make you a whole new kind of creature that never existed before. And you don't have to wait till you die right now. I know the apostle Paul said, I knew a man <laughs> in Christ. Yeah. He said that man, whether he is in the body or out of the body, I could not tell such a one ascended to the third heaven of words unlawful for a man to utter. So Paul had experiences in Christ, in the glory of God, and he, he didn't have to wait till he died to go That's to heaven. That's true. <laughs> and yeah. so heaven, um, Smith Wigglesworth uh, said, heaven, he said, I had a vision of heaven for one hour just one day while I was meditating in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit just brought that revelation, and I had a vision of heaven for an hour. This world needs to have a vision of heaven, you know, uh, the song Amazing Grace, I was blind, but now I see. Yeah. There's something about, like Paul, he thought he was doing, he had everything in line, he was doing it right, and he was blinded <laughs> by the glory of mm. God, but his inside eyes were opened up and he began to see what he never saw before. Mm. And the Holy Spirit's job is to open our eyes and to reveal Christ, to reveal the glory of God. You know, when Jesus was manifest in the earth, it says in John 1, 14, he, he became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We saw his glory hmm. as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace and truth. He carried the glory from heaven into the earth. He never mm. lost the earth, uh, let, lost that glory in the even, earth even while he was here. Even in the birth here. of Christ, yes. the, the glory of God shone round about them. Mm -hmm. And so in the birth of Jesus, you're like, this is something amazing. Astounding. That, that Jesus in the incarnation, God manifests in the flesh. And think about everything God did in Christ. Uh, you know, I had a, a, a friend that told his testimony how that uh, he had gotten saved by reading a gospel tract. Somebody left at a <laughs> restaurant. And he told how that when he was, uh, you know, uh, growing up as yeah. a young man working at a farm where they raised chickens, and one of his jobs was to, uh, you know, uh, ship chickens out or receive a shipment of chickens yeah. when they came in. So he said a big truck of, of chickens would come in on a big truck and uh, his job was to unload the truck all and they came all in cages you know and then three <laughs> or four chickens in each cage and they'd maybe traveled 200 miles or something like that yeah and so he said the chickens so they wouldn't hurt themselves they had like oh little strings tied around their feet so they were laying in the cage and they had traveled a long ways and so his job was to take the cages down and then open the cages and let the chickens out on the <laughs> ground. And so he said he'd let them out on the ground. Of course, their feet were bound. They just laid there. So then he said, and he would go and cut the strings off of their feet. And so even though they were out of the cage, even though their, uh, their feet were now yeah. free, the strings were gone. He said the chickens would just lay there. <laughs> they didn't know they were free. He said the chickens would just lay there on the ground, even though they're out of the cage, even though the strings were cut <laughs> off of their feet, they just laid there on the ground. So he said the favorite part of his job was he would walk around and slap the chickens. So he said when he'd go around and slap the chickens, he said they'd jump up and start running all over the place, and they'd realize that now they're free. <laughs> they probably well, were squawking. <laughs> <laughs> they actually actually were free before, but they, they had been it. bound so long, they just laid they there. They just stayed in the same position. They let, even though everything, they were free, they just laid there because they were used to that yeah. bondage. Yeah. And so his job was to slap them mm -hmm. and let them realize that now they're free. So Christ hath redeemed us. He yes. hath delivered us. And he has qualified us for our redemption, freedom in Christ. And so sometimes the favorite part of our job is to go, <laughs> <Slap> <laughs> go into <those> churches <laughs> and you see a lot of people laying around like, 
oh, I'm so bound and I've got so many problems, and uh, slap them chickens and let them realize you are free. Christ has redeemed yeah. you. In other words, he's already, done, already done everything he's going to do about your freedom. So just go ahead and jump up and run around. <laughs> hallelujah. Because he whom the Son has set free is it's free, free indeed. indeed. So you're free from the bondage yes. of the past. Yes. And it says, and in Christ now, because of that glory, he said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there it is, is liberty. freedom or liberty. Yeah. Amen. Emancipation from bondage. Yeah, this <laughs> is the work Amen. of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's job is to take everything Christ has done for you and make it a reality in yeah. your experience. Wow. So you may have the doctrine, but the moment the Holy Spirit is involved in yeah. your situation, then he takes what Jesus has done for you and makes it a reality in your experience. So you experience Jesus. You experience Christ. You experience redemption. You experience the blessing of God and you experience the glory of God and you're changed from glory to glory. So you could pray. You could say, God, show me your glory like Moses did. Yeah. Reveal your glory to me. And then you could say, God, I want to be changed by your glory like Paul. Yeah. Uh, and just begin to ask. God to do these things, yeah. and He will, and then begin to praise and thank and receive it, yeah. and the glory of God will begin to explode in your own spirit, and your increase. own soul, and increase, and even in your body. Yeah. <laughs> the glory raised Jesus' physical body from the dead, so that same spirit that mm. raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Yeah. and will quicken and give life yeah. to your mortal body. So even right now, acknowledge that the glory that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, and the Spirit of God is working in you, mm. and Jesus is, <laughs> yeah. woo, he's alive. He and is well, Lord. And begin to shout, begin to praise, and be like those chickens that know they're free. <laughs> Run around so, the room. <laughs> so don't wait. You don't have to wait on anything else. God's already <laughs> done everything he's going to yes. do about it in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you just receive it, look in and live in the light of it, yeah. and then mix faith with it and rejoice and hold fast to your confession of faith. But let's look at the Ephesians 3 prayer. And oh, that's, this, this is the prayer that uses the phrase, the riches of his glory. So Ephesians 3 and verse 14, 15, 16, and through uh, verse the, the end of the chapter. Okay. And so here's what he says. He says, um, uh, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And so uh, he calls God, the God of glory, the Father of glory. And then he says in verse uh, 14, 15, 16, Father God, you're the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm asking you that you would give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. So that's in the Ephesians 1 prayer, and he talks about the riches of his glory. Now in the Ephesians 3 prayer, he says that he would grant you or grant us according to the riches of his glory. There's that phrase again, the riches of his glory. And one translation says the inexhaustible resources mm. of his presence and his glorious perfection and his person so that he would grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with mighty power by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit himself in our inner man, in our inner man, our innermost being and personality, our spirit to be strengthened by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And he says that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length and depth and breadth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And verse 20, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask a thing according to his power that works in us. Amen. And the next verse says, and unto him be glory in the church wow. throughout all that. ages and every generation that his glory in the church 
and in us as believers revealed to us and strengthened in our inner man with mighty power by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a study on the glory of God? The glory of God in its simplest form is the goodness of God. It's His manifest presence and is the one thing that satisfies the human soul. As believers, God has called us to be carriers of His glory. As we hunger and cry out for God to show us His glory, we will see His power revealed and manifested. In his brand new book, The Glory, Experiencing the Goodness of God, Pastor Mark Hankins will explain how experiencing the glory of God will bring the changes you desire. The glory of God is the goodness of God in extravagant manifestation. God's design for your life will always include the wow factor. It will be like a dream coming true. With this new book, you'll also get the three CD set, The Glory. Your gift of $20 will help Mark and Trina train believers around the world. To order Pastor Mark Hankin's new book, please call us today at 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for tuning in today while we have been talking about the glory of God. You know that the glory of God is His goodness. It's his goodness. It's the wow factor. It's those things that happen in our lives that you're like, man, that could only be God. I've had those moments in my life where I'm like, wow, only God could do that. Do you know that is the glory of God? That is his goodness. And he wants us to live in his goodness every single day of our lives. He wants you to live in his goodness and in his glory every day. My dad has this awesome new book out. It's called The Glory, Experiencing the Goodness of God. So many Christians, so many believers don't know that they can actually walk in God's goodness every single day of their lives. Get this book. It is exciting. It will show you the wow factor of living by faith and living in the goodness of God. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran, and we'll see you again. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.